Thursday night footy, how'd you all go last night? How many plays you have? Let me know in the comments where your scores are at. And if you haven't yet, please subscribe to the channel. I'd appreciate that as well. The Sharkies get a great win up against the Dragons, 36-12. to And unfortunately, another game for the Dragons where a Sinbin really took its effect. And, you know, it was a pretty well back and forth game in the wet last night. And then unfortunately that uh, Jaden Sua getting Sinbin again. And yes, it wasn't a great hit, but... Gee, they turned the game. They really should be bringing in, I think, a five-minute sin bin rule. If you're gonna, if you're gonna, you know, take blokes off the field for th that kind of tackle, I think the five minutes is probably best. You know, if you can try and get through that five minutes, and then well done. And if you, you know, the ten minutes just, you know, it really hurts you for the rest of the game. But an absolutely incredible game from Nico Hines. And I had a few people asking me in the live stream last night, um, Nico or or Hass for for captain, and I was just saying, you know, just stick solid, stick safe. I don't know how he's going to score in this type of um, lower scoring game I thought it was going to be, and it turns out to be 48 points. So, uh, well done to Nico. Obviously got the try. He's a he's a special special player, isn't he? So massive uh, massive buy from the Sharks, and and well done to the Sharkies for you know being two from three, uh, you know almost three from three and almost one from three. But uh, awesome start for them. 24 tackles for him, four misses is is okay in in a wet you know in a wet game. For example, I think you know we can take that 100 meters gain, 450 kick meters. Imagine it was the old rules. He would have picked up a hundred with those kick meters. So, um, yeah, six goals as well. Just does everything with the with the try assist as well. So, one well on to Nico. If you captain him, awesome work. Congratulations. Nikora comes back with a with a nice score. So, forty one tackles is what we were seeing from him in the trial game. So, this kind of game where it was a, a back and forth, um, you know, big big game there in terms of through the middle. Obviously, it was a bunch of tries, but the yeah the ball was in play a lot more. Try assist for him as well. Uh, so yeah, 62. So well done if you hold on to him. He, he did a good job. Benny Hunt gives you a 60. So yeah, averaging 60 now across the um, across the three games, which is which is great. And if you you have him in your side, you you really you're really sitting pretty. You're happy with where he's um where he's at for his first three games. If you picked him up this week, you'd also be pretty happy as well. So there's a couple of try assists for him. You know, the 519 kick meters, running the ball as well, and a couple of turnover tackles was great for Benny. And um, yeah, well done. Blakey Prahili does it again. Another great game. Ran the ball a little bit. Had one kick out of dummy half, but um, you know, try assist there as well. So he, you know, a really nice kick in in behind the line for Braden Hamlin Ueli. And shout out to the fellow in the in the live stream as well that that selected um Hamlin Ueli for the uh the anytime try score. Well done there. But Blakey just keep, you know continues to do well. I can't really um say much more. Like if you've if you have decided to pick him up and went against my advice of you know that he might slowly drop away. Then he hasn't yet. You know, another good 55. You'll take that at his price. But he is getting, you know, especially after this week, he's going to be around that 650 mark. So you're picking him up right now to become a gun long term. And if you think you can do that, great. If you're not sure, then I'd probably hold off. Ramey, much better game for him after a couple of lower ones. So you know, he's always going to be around that keeper level in the centers. Debellin, if you held on to him, played 56 minutes on the off the bench. A couple of turnover tackles bumped his scores up a little bit. <coughs> Lomax in there with 44 was solid. So you're going you're gonna to get this from him all year, around that 40, 45 average. So you take that, I think you can really hold off. Um, you don't have to pick him up at this stage. Yes, he'll be a, a decent player um, in terms of being a gun in gun status by the end of the year, but you don't need him now. Fanukin, obviously they didn't need him uh, for as long this week. Only the 40 minutes when they're up, you know, pretty comfortably. There's no point playing in big minutes. McInnes did play some bigger minutes, so just be aware. Fanukin probably 10 minutes down on where he will be. I, I suspect or expect around 50 minutes for him. Uh, but the PPM was awesome. He actually snuck through the line with a tackle break or two uh, as well. So he got some yeah, some nice points in. Only one penalty conceded. Uh, so an awesome PPM. and so much higher than he has been at the Storm. So again, just be aware. They're probably inflated a little bit. Um, and his, his price will start to level out. You won't see him becoming a keeper, guys. So just be aware of that. Jackie B. Bird. Big bird, eh? 39 in his full 80. Did get moved to 5 8 by the end of the night. Uh, Amone went into the 9 jersey when, um, in the 9 position when Mbaye went off. So, yeah, he just scored really no points in the back end there. Someone that just doesn't make enough tackles, like he doesn't get involved enough on that side of the ball. Obviously, you know, a few of these edge guys were a little bit lower in their tackles, but, yeah, 19 tackles for 5 misses for a guy that we need to you know, be a keeper, they average around that 50 mark, it's just not good enough, and he's probably someone that I'd be tempted to potentially trade out next week, he, you know, he's averaging 44.3, you know, before this he was in the, you know, the 46 range for average, so yes, he's made a little bit of cash, so it's not all doom and gloom, but it's also not exactly what we want, and he could be someone that you target, you know, to get Starling, or you maybe use his cash to potentially 
upgrade to a Cleary, I think, would be a decent option if you can downgrade him and upgrade someone else. That's probably a good idea. He's, he's still going to be a keeper in the centres, but is he going to score exactly what we want? It's probably a little bit of a luxury trade, but I think that yeah, he's just not going to score exactly what we need. He did average 50 last year in the second row, so there's that. But he scored two tries now and hasn't really scored, you know, hasn't scored over a 50. So uh, a bit of a pain for Birdie and someone I'd be looking to potentially move on eventually. Uh, Talakai and Mbai, both 37, both not really fantasy relevant. Another lower score from McInnes in 51 minutes this time. So didn't run the ball too much, but just got in and tackled hard. So he was solid in his, in his time on the park. Again, just keep waiting on him, wait for his price to drop, and then we will we'll, we'll let you know when I think he's going to be a, a potentially a good buy. We look at Bull Kennedy, again, another lower score. Played a little bit better in terms of his stats, but yeah, he, he could be very interesting if he gets down to like a 350 mark, um, and then he gets you know, a lot more involved, then he could potentially be a pickup as a little bit of a you know, turnaround play, um, mid, mid to lower range um, cash cow kind of thing there, which would be interesting. Sully with 30 this game, again, just against a team that was you know better than them. He wasn't able to do too much, so don't be worried about him. If you own him, we'll take the 30 and move on. Tracy, a really good game from him and just you know copped the head knock and then the groin injury as well. So we'll see what happens with him, but it looks like you know Malatalo will just you know eventually come straight back in for, for Tracy. For Fida, I was doing pretty well, to be honest, in the 28 minutes before he got sin bin, so he didn't come back on after that. Lost the seven points with that. Um, but he's still making a tiny bit of cash for you, you know, 25 average for someone that's priced at 240, you get seven points of value there. So uh, he keeps that up and he'll make a little bit more, but eventually probably going to have to be traded when they get everyone back. Uh, Rava had a bit of a lower game as well with a, just the one line break and you know, a few negatives there. Amone was 17, so yeah, a, a tough one with, with his team struggling a little bit. Only really made tackles, he only had the 18 metres run, which is just, Terrible for what we need from him. He had a turnover tackle as well and still got 17. So uh, thinking about him and owning him at the start of the season, you were hoping that he was going to run the ball a lot more and he's just not doing it. So he has to be moved on. He's 300 and oh, it's going to be like 320k after this. So still enough to, to move down or, or upgrade him to someone else. And hopefully you traded him on this week um, you know, before, before the 17. Um, and someone like Tyrell Sloan. With his 12, so he just doesn't get involved enough. The 64 run meters, you know, he still misses a few tackles, obviously, and stuff like that. But 12 tackles is pretty cool for someone who's a fullback. Uh, but yeah, just a not a great effort um, in terms of his fantasy scores. And that's two weeks in a row, so he's going to lose a fair bit of cash, and you need to get rid of him before he drops all of it. <laughs> um, he's not playing as good as last year. Obviously, he got yeah, he got a bunch of tries, and at the back end of the year, when you know, you're a young, fresh guy coming in, and everyone's a little bit more tired, there's a few more opportunities as a fullback, which he's not getting at the moment. And a couple to finish, Cody Ramsey with three in his 80 minutes, so whoever uh, picked him up, the 7%, you got a beautiful three in 80 minutes. So yeah, again, he's never been fantasy relevant and you know, shows you what, what trials can do. Like they're, they're good to have a look at for, for certain players and you know, other ones that have a bit of a track record. It kind of shows that they're, that's probably unlikely that they'll end up with the heights that you might have thought in those, um, in those trial games. So... That's that. Trindle with negative one and he's 13. A couple of misses, a couple of errors. Not great for him. Um, but no one has him at this stage. Yeah, point two. And then Moylan. So he had the negative three in the full 80 minutes. Owned by 4% of teams. Um, after his really, really good game last week, he actually gained 30k over the two weeks. And now he's going to start to lose it, which is um, unfortunate if you own him. Um, just never been super fantasy relevant. He'll have a few good games and he really sucks people in and, um, and then goes back to being uh, poor again, unfortunately. Um, and didn't have to do as much in this team, especially when you got Hines just dominating. Um, but I, I like the I like what Moylan offers, even though he didn't score too well in this game. So that's that, and we'll just pop back into my squad and just again a little bit of an idea on on looping for anyone that isn't sure. The only loop that we could do, just say this is the head team, team for example, the only loop we could do this week is Bird, and you'll be like, well, why have you got him in number five when he played in the first game? And if you look, you know, Tui's playing in uh, the second game of the, of, of the week, right? And anyone else in this game, uh, anyone else, he's the only person, sorry, that played in the first game that you can loop. So the thing was with Bird, if he played terribly, you'd leave him in, yeah, if he played terribly and got 10, 15, or if he got injured or sent off or whatever in the first 10, 15 minutes, he, um, you, you just don't take his score and you can put Leo Thompson, Ilias, or Walters up into four. Right, so it's just a really a free loop where you couldn't loop anyone else in this game. So if that makes sense, or if you're not sure, um, let me know in the comments, but yeah, it's just a free loop for this one. So yeah, again, if he played terribly, you can move Tui down 
and move Thompson or Ilias or Walters up into that four jersey. So, yeah, I'm happy with the 39. I think he's, that's going to be better than what these three below are going to get. So we leave him in that five jersey. Uh, sorry, leave Tui in that, in that four jersey and um, in the interchange position and just hold strong with the rest of the squad. And I suppose unless there's, if there's any other injuries to any players, we can just straight swap people in and that's fine. If it happened to be an injury to Bully, for example, I then get um, Bird's score into that starting side, and then I'd get number six anyway. Right? So just be aware of that going forward, guys, um, when you're doing your loops. So, yeah, there's other things you can do if there's two people out, which we'll um, explain in another video. But that's that's where we're at, guys. The um, yeah, Happy with, obviously, the head-to-head -head team with Hunty, Hines, and then we'll take Bird's score of 39. Obviously, it would have been nicer to get a 45 or 50 from Birdie, but it is what it is. Well, you know, it's, it's five, ten points away from what he is, so he didn't get injured, he didn't get suspended, so what do you do? But that's that, that's our video guys, hope you um, got some value out of that Thursday night game and, and enjoyed um, you know, and, and learned a little bit from what I just popped out in that video, I uh, hope to see you in the next video, I'm going to do the, um, the Draft Stars video uh, a little bit later today, so we'll get into that, and then good luck um, and enjoy the Friday night games, see you later team.